What's going on everybody, C4 here and welcome to today's draft prep video where we'll be looking at my top 10 wide receivers for the upcoming NFL draft at the halfway point roughly of the college football season. Now this is by far uh, the biggest disparity I have in my rankings as there's way more honorable mentions than there has been for previous positions because I am a huge fan of this year's wide receiver class and I find it incredibly difficult to rank them pretty much after the top two. Everyone else is pretty fluid and I would not be surprised to see anyone from four to ten completely be off this list come you know my final rankings after the combine so much is going to be weighed on these this draft class there's a lot of big wide receivers if they run really really fast that is going to improve their draft stock if they run really slow like we've seen uh with like you know david mack to like laquan treadwell and mike williams and guys like that uh slow 40 yard dash times no matter what kind of production or what your uh positive traits are for a big bodied wide receiver will tank your draft stock at the very least you know 10 picks you know, fast 40 time we've seen like with Will Fuller, we've seen with John Ross, will get you drafted ahead of the big body production type wide receivers. Now, there are a lot of those in this draft class. So we are going to start with the honorable mentions. First two guys that I'm going to talk about are guys that would definitely make this list, but I'm just uncertain if they are going to declare or not because there's so much depth. I think it would both benefit these guys to go back to school. First up is Demetrius Robertson from Georgia. He was a transfer from Cal. I believe, now I haven't done a deep dive into see he transferred to Georgia because of a family issue. Usually that's like a medical thing. So I don't know if that's been resolved. I don't know if it's one of those things where he wants to go to the NFL and make money sooner than later. Or does he want to spend another year uh, in Georgia between the hedges uh, to get all that stuff sorted out. So I'm a little bit uncertain there. But if he does declare, he is a top 10 wide receiver. Another one is DK Metcalf from Ole Miss. Probably my favorite wide receiver in college. Uh, but he just suffered a season-ending injury. And I think it would be benefit him. He's a redshirt sophomore. To return next year and be probably the undisputed number one wide receiver in 2020. I mean, looking at that draft class. Um, you got Jerry Judy from Alabama. CeeDee Lamb from Oklahoma. Uh, LaVisca Chanel from Colorado, Donovan Peoples. I mean, it's going to be another really good draft class, but I think if DK Metcalf returns to Ole Miss, uh, it will benefit him in the long run. So a couple other honorable mentions, guys that could very well crack my top 10 when we revise these. Uh, we have Anton Wesley from Texas Tech, big six foot six tall wide receiver. He looks like he has good speed, looks fast in pads. Uh, Denzel Mims from Baylor. He is probably going to be my sleeper of this year's draft. I, in my original ratings, I had him at 10, but I just felt like I can't let my draft crushes uh, overlook, you know, proven production and some of those other intangibles. But Denzel Mims, I'm a big fan. You got Jawan Johnson from Penn State. Little Jordan Humphrey, who has some off the field, but looks really good for Texas. Just a freak size type guy. Kelvin Harmon, NC State. Tyler Johnson from Minnesota. And Hakeem Butler from Iowa State. All these guys have looked very, very impressive, have caught my eye, and just missed out right now on the cutoff to be in the top 10. But I would not be surprised to see many of those guys have a chance to crack the top 10 when we revise at the end of the college football season. So without further ado, jumping in at number 10, I have Aaron Fuller, 5'11", 185 pound wide receiver from Washington. So far this season, he has 42 catches for 650 yards and three touchdowns. For a guy that's a little bit undersized, he has a really, really good catch radius. He has made a lot of one-handed, spectacular catches throughout the season for Washington. And I've watched, I think, three Washington games so far. And in every one of those games, this guy here has made at least two wow plays. He has great speed. I think that this year, um, when there's so many of those 6'2", 6'3", 210 to 20-pound wide receivers, the speedsters are going to be the guys that are going to be viewed as kind of a niche and they're going to get overdrafted because there's a lack of that deep threat speed so a guy like Aaron Fuller I think because of the lack of size his speed will get him drafted higher than some of the other big body guys and plus I think you know we're trying to talk about another guy that's really really fast but also could be viewed as undersized that has a really good catch radius for a guy that is that small uh, but we are starting with Aaron Fuller and everything I've seen so far from Washington. He looks like a better wide receiver than John Ross. Won't have the John Ross speed, but I think he would be one of those guys that runs a low 4-4s, four maybe creeps into the 4-3s, and will get himself drafted uh, anywhere between, uh, I'd say, mid-second round to early fourth round, somewhere in that range. But, man, I, I you know, as a team... You know, you know, I always try to refer it back to the Eagles without making these Eagle videos. Philly needs to add more depth at wide receiver. This is a good upcoming draft class. Going to wide receiver number nine, we have Anthony Johnson, six foot two, two hundred ten pound wide receiver out of the University of Buffalo. Uh, Tyree Jackson, who we did hype up a little bit during our uh, QB rankings. This is his favorite target. 
Uh, last year, it was insane. This year, I don't think he's going to hit the same numbers he did. I think last year, he was like 1,400 yards, 14 touchdowns, something crazy like that. But so far this year, he has 24 catches for 430 yards and five touchdowns. Again, another guy, uh, underrated athlete, don't necessarily think he's going to test the greatest, but he has really, really good hands, good route running, ideal size, and I think that uh, you know he, he has the traits that I think he can be an outside wide receiver uh, in the NFL, as well as being inside, and that versatility usually does help your draft stock. Uh, but as of right now, he's like, you know, pretty much anyone from 7 to 10 can be interchangeable with the honor of mentions. I'm just more so going with the proven production with Anthony Johnson over multiple seasons and uh, being able to make that comparison and say, yes, I think the things that he's able to do for Buffalo, you know, level of competition, sure, that could get brought up. But anytime we talk about Buffalo, hey, let's just look at Khalil Mack, all right? You know, show some respect to the Mack from the Mack. Uh, I think Johnson can translate well to the next level. Going to wide receiver number eight. He would be higher if he could stay healthy. And if he can, you know, finish out the season strong, he probably will go up a couple spots. And that is Debo Samuel, six feet tall, 210 pounds, out of South Carolina. So far this season, he has 33 catches for 380 yards and four touchdowns. I think he has pretty underrated speed. He has a really, really good catch rate. He's had some highlight reel catches. He just needs to stay healthy, man. Uh, throughout his college career, I don't even think he's played a full season yet. So, unfortunately, durability, we're already seeing that with John Ross, who, when we did those rankings two years ago, I said, John Ross is at my number three spot. Well, everyone was drooling. Over the 4-2-2, the 40-yard dash time. You can't teach speed. Well, you can't teach durability. John Ross did not have much durability, and we've seen that so far uh, for the Cincinnati Bengals. He's been unable to stay on the field. So until Debo Samuel can – if he can finish out the rest of the season, you know, get 12, 10 to 12 games under his belt, um, I mean, I don't know. That, that would assume they make the bowl game. We'll just say if he can get nine games, 9 to 10, done this year, uh, maybe we can bump him up a couple spots. But for right now, from talent alone, he's probably top five. But the lack of durability puts him at eight. Going to number seven, it's going to be Colin Johnson, six foot six, 220 pounds, out of Texas. So far this season, he has 41 catches for 560 yards and five touchdowns. Just a monster. This guy's pretty much a tight end at the wide receiver spot. Makes uh, really, really good catches, can move the chains. Obviously, will be an outside type player. Uh, there's a niche for these guys still in the NFL. I mean, some people might have been soured on these bigger, not necessarily burner-type wide receivers like Kelvin Benjamin. I think that's more of an attitude issue and a work ethic issue. Uh, but, you know, a guy like this can move the chains. He's still a, a valuable target. I don't know where the value on these big-bodied wide receivers are going to be because they're pretty much growing on trees for this upcoming draft class. But if we are talking about the big freaks, I think Colin Johnson right now, uh, along with really uh, maybe Hakeem Butler, are, are the best of the bunch. And uh, I think Colin Johnson has a much more refined body of work and uh, is a big reason why uh, Sam Ellinger doesn't look as bad as he does because, you know, you have guys like Colin Johnson and little Jordan Humphrey that are making a lot of plays for him. Kind of reminds me a little bit of not the same type of caliber player, but the same kind of scenario as uh, Mike Evans at Texas A&M with Johnny Menzel. I think Colin Johnson's very similar to that with Sam Ellinger. Going to wide receiver number six, we have Paris Campbell, six feet tall, 205 pounds, out of Ohio State. So far this season, he has 52 catches for 600 yards and seven touchdowns. Now, his hands are inconsistent, but the fact that he has good production, he's a burner, he has good size, he's not like he's not a burner like Aaron Fuller, or a guy like we'll talk about Hollywood Brown, where they're fast, but they are undersized. He's big, he's fast, he's a height, weight, speed type player. And uh, while his hands have improved, they have been an issue, uh, inconsistent catching, but I think he has improved that a little bit this year. And I think from the size and traits alone, and obviously uh, big, you know, big popular school, those guys usually uh, are going up against really tough competition for more often than not. I think that will go in his favor to help improve his draft stock, but I think from a speed standpoint, from a production standpoint, and the level of competition should get Paris Campbell drafted pretty high, even though he's not as complete of a player as some of the other wide receivers that we're talking about on this list. Going to number five, it's going to be J.J. Arcego whiteside 6'3", 225 pounds, out of Stanford. So far this season, he has 37 catches for 630 yards and nine touchdowns. This guy here pretty much just comes down with the ball at any given time. He has well over 20 yards per catch. Even though he's not a burner, I think that, you know, I would probably would edge him ahead of uh, of Colin Johnson for the second best big bodied wide receiver. I even I said Colin. I mean, they're not really in the same stratosphere because we, we're talking about six six. I feel like six four and under is one tier, and then six five and above is another tier. So for that tier two of of the the, the lengthy outside corner, our single white side is my number two. 
Uh, been a very reliable player for KJ Costello in Stanford. He makes a lot of big plays, makes a lot of ke- clutch catches, does not have a lot of drops. I think he could be inside and or outside at the next level, which gives him some added boost to his draft stock. And uh, he's just made a bunch of plays for Stanford this year. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what his 40-yard dash time is because any time, even if you're a bigger wide receiver, you got 20-plus yards per catch, you could surprise people. Where a lot of people see 6'3", 225, you'd expect probably high 4.5s. If you can get in the low 4.5s, Maybe in the top four, four, you know, something. You know, if you can get between that four, four, seven, and four, five, two range, that will really help out his draft stock. Going to wide receiver number four, we have Emmanuel Hall, six foot three, two hundred pounds, out of Missouri. So far this season, he has eighteen catches for four hundred and thirty yards and three touchdowns. Here is your height, weight, speed freak for this year's draft class. I will say that I'm putting here at this spot. It, it could change, but I'm putting him here at this spot just from, you know, what I've seen, his highlight tapes. Because I've watched Mizzou play two games this year, and I have not seen him make a lot of big plays. Um, I don't even think he had a single catch against Alabama. But then when you look at just what he brings, how he's going to test his body of work, he's got to go pretty high. I think he'll probably be a second-round pick. Uh, Pretty much most of these guys are going to be between first and fourth round. Uh, That's how much depth I do believe is at the wide receiver spot. But I think a guy like Emmanuel Hall, for me, I haven't been overly impressed in the games that I've watched. But in the highlight reels, the condensed footage, and all that stuff that's available on YouTube and other sites, does look pretty good. And I think because of the traits, because of the height, weight, speed, he will get drafted, uh, I would say, probably in the second round. Um, But yeah, I can't talk a whole lot about him right now because personally, I always like the way what game I, I watch random games against good level defenses. That's where I want to see these skill position players excel. And I haven't really seen that with Emmanuel Hall this season. But, hey, there's still a second half of the year to go. And uh, it looks like sooner than later his connection with Drew Locke's going to get back to what it was last year. And until then, he's parking his ass at number four just from the uh, the trait standpoint and the height, weight, speed. Going to number three, it is going to be A.J. Brown, six foot one, 225-pound receiver out of Ole Miss. So far this season, he has 60 catches for 800 yards and five touchdowns. Now, he was the most hyped wide receiver coming into this year's draft. He's pretty much number one on a lot of people's list, depending on where you're looking. I've watched Ole Miss play. Um, you know, I've always I think DK Metcalf is the better of the two, but he's going to have a spot. I, I think he could be one of these guys that a lot of people have at number one. Then after the combine, they're going to move him down a little bit because he's not. I don't think he's going to run very very fast. I think he's going to be in that four fives. I mean, he is big. He's almost 230 pounds. He's a slot wide receiver. He's the best slot wide receiver in this class. But how high do those guys get drafted? How high are guys that might have questions about getting separation at the next level going to get drafted? I think if you are going to struggle to get separation, you know, you're going to struggle to be a first round pick. I think he should be a solid second round pick. He has good, reliable hands, will be a starter day one. But when you don't have that, that separation speed, it really is going to affect your draft stock. And I don't really see it on the tape right now. For AJ Brown, as people are just blowing up my phone saying, see, for when these wide receiver rankings coming out, I'm working on it. Going to wide receiver number two, we have Hollywood Brown, Marquise Brown, 5'11, 175 pounds, could be generous, out of Oklahoma. So far this season, he has 38 catches for 700 yards and seven touchdowns. Again, game breaking speed. People are seeing Tyreek Hill at Kansas City. You can't cover it. You can't stop it all game long. You might have a fast corner, he's still going to get beat. You can't shut Tyreek Hill down. He gets what? Eight to ten targets a game. He's got to get open at minimum. No one care who you are. Jalen Ramsey, Patrick Peterson, any of these guys. He's got to get open at least two or three of those times. That's all it takes for him to take it 70 yards to the house. I think, you know, the, the league's all about trends. The league's all about chasing what is uh, the next big thing. We saw for a while it was big corners. Everyone wanted the next Richard Sherman. We saw maybe the last couple of years those receiving running backs. Everyone wants the new Le'Veon Bell, David Johnson. I think now... We might be creeping into teams not necessarily looking for the guys that are NFL size. They're just looking for guys with elite perimeter speed that obviously aren't a liability with their hands. I think like Hollywood Brown, very similar to Aaron Fuller, we talked about at number 10. Really nice catch radius for a guy that is slightly undersized, under six feet tall. I've seen him a bunch of times. He's jumped up and made a play in the red zone where it's like you don't have any right to be making that play across the middle of the field or a jump ball scenario. He's coming down with it. So I think Hollywood Brown, depending on what he tests, I think he's going to have to run probably – Anything under a four three five, he will be he'll be the second wide receiver off the board. Maybe even the first, depending on what team he's a wide receiver and how early they're going to be drafting and what dimension they're looking at bringing to their team. But right now, Hollywood Brown very easy to be at number two, and I don't think that's going to change. And at number one, we're going to Keel Harry, six foot four, two hundred fifteen pound wide receiver out of Arizona State. So far this season, he has forty two catches for five hundred and seventy yards and five touchdowns. Biggest trait that I look for in a wide receiver, obviously when I want speed, is I want the guys that even if they're covered, you throw the ball. 
They're open if they're covered. That is the kind of trait that Nikhil Harry has. I've watched more than my fair share of Arizona State games as not a fan of that team at all. It's just usually on at you know the the Pac-12 after dark. If you're in Canada, we I've probably got four or five Arizona State games this year. They just throw it in the ball, and he will go up and make a play. Sure, Pac-12 defenses, yeah, not not the best. But I think with the the range at 6'4", 215 pounds, excellent hands, good crisp route running. Got to be interested to see how he tests. If he, if he runs slow, these rankings could change slightly. But I don't think he's going to be too, too bad. I think he probably runs low 4.5s, which for a guy of his size is good. He's not going to be Calvin Johnson. But the fact that even when Nikhil Harry's covered, he can still make plays that I can't say for a lot of these wide receivers. And he makes those plays more consistently than the other wide receivers that we've talked about. Got to put him at number one, uh, pending his 40-yard dash time, which won't change it drastically. I'd be shocked if he's not number one or number two. But for right now, uh, Nikhil Harry is the best in the business, and the business is getting paid nothing while your college makes millions and millions of dollars. But that's for another video. So there you go, guys. Those are my top 10 wide receiver rankings at the midway point of the college football season for the upcoming 2019 NFL Draft. Did I miss anyone? Do you agree or disagree with my rankings? Let me know in the comment section below. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Say if we can get, I don't know, 300 likes on this video. We will have the offensive lineman uh, video come out next week. Yeah, not the sexiest positions, but that's also where you guys want your information of what the best o linemen are in the upcoming draft because pretty much every team in the NFL needs an offensive lineman. There's like three good O-lines in the entirety of the National Football League. So uh, that one will be out next week. Hope you guys are enjoying these little 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 breakups between Madden videos because I enjoy doing them and uh, they're good for me to have a baseline when it comes to mock draft season and where I've you know changed my opinion on players throughout the college football year. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.